Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. Law firms will take this as a retainer. What? It must be a law firm when they hungry as hell. Now you gonna help me with this parole I'm dealing with? Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. With one taste of our premium blends of all natural ingredients, herbs, and spices, mm, you'll fall in love with meat all over again. Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce collection is made up of two zesty flavors, original and spicy. There's only one way to bring order back to barbecuing. Just add Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce and seasoning and you be the judge. On to Fanny. Oh, I went back and looked. She testified she and Wade were no longer together, right? Wade said that, but Prego daughter gets busted, and you can see it right here on the cameras that the police have when Wade and Fanny show up. Now, I said she was real dumb buddy for getting up and testifying and destroying the Fifth Amendment protection she had. And now we know what they're up to, laundering money, stealing all kinds of stuff, fraud. And then she shows up here with him to do this. And she wants to get special treatment, and she's too stupid to even send somebody or just make a call. She's got to show up with somebody that she is not supposed to be with anymore. And there they are on screen. Well, so I'm going to play the clip. And I actually, um, I pre recorded a short video on this the other day. But um, I'm going to play this clip. But I also want to implement, um, she's in, outside of her daughter being arrested um, today in Georgia was the Ashley Merchant was back in, in front of the Georgia Senate hearing for the open records. And so it's a couple other clips I want to play regarding Fannie Willis. She's been busy in the news this week. It's been slow this summer, but now she's just starting to pick up steam. So let me play this. Couple hours, probably. Uh, Mom, Dad, who's with you? Yeah. Okay, okay. Nice to meet you. So, nice, nice to meet you. What? So, um, apparently, oh, apparently her license is suspended okay. for something. She doesn't tell us what for or why or where. Or that's something she's going to have to call DMV. Okay. Right. Probably what happened is she had a speeding ticket, some kind of traffic infraction. Never went to court. Didn't take care of it. Okay. Right. Um, that's the best guess. So she's gone over to Fayette County Jail, which is right in the Fayetteville Square. Uh, it's 145 Johnson Avenue. Yeah. Normally, I would say a couple hours is the process. It just depends on how busy they are and like that, okay? Um, the driving on the suspended is uh, basically a traffic citation. She's got to have her fingerprints done, a picture taken, and then she can make her bonds. You can pay cash, use the bondsman, be 10%, whatever. Um, they've got a list of people over there, too, that you can choose from and use. So the vehicle's registered. Her, excuse me, registered to her. Okay. Um, I don't know if it was on a flock hit or if the officer observed some kind of traffic infraction. It wasn't me. I didn't make traffic stop. He's already gone and got her going. Okay. So whatever the case may be, when you run the, the tag, it obviously gives us the vehicle information and the registered owner. Okay. And it's already in the system that she's has the invalid license yet. Yeah. Okay. So upon that, we just verify that it is that person driving or stop the car first at that point. We don't have to know it's them. It's General assumption that the registered owner is the driver of the vehicle. Yeah. You know, if you stop and it's not, okay, have a nice day. But uh, in this case, she was. Yep. So, yep. so just are the keys to the car here? Yes. So yeah, everything's here. Yeah. yeah. Everything's in there. She has three numbers, I believe. She gave, let's say, your number, 
name of JC and a third name I didn't hear. She'll have to like, we'll, she'll have to get three phone calls when she gets up there. Yeah, once, once they get the process done, she can make a couple phone calls and call you guys and say, okay, I'm ready. This is how much it is, whatever. I want to say off the top of my head, I think driving on suspended license is about 1200 bucks. Yeah. Somewhere right in that area. Every municipality is different, you know, give or take a little bit, but somewhere around there. So, um, thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. You know no. what strikes me? You're in charge of the prosecution and you don't know these things. Not in this county. It's a one over. See, in Atlanta, these counties are like suburbs because at the time they were created back in the 19th century, early 19th century, uh, it was a very rural southern agricultural area that was picking up as an industrial center and a trade center. So they had these small counties that got subsumed when this city, Atlanta, that Sherman burnt or didn't burn, it got burnt while he was there. But um, yeah, so I'm surprised that a chief prosecutor for one of the largest counties in the state doesn't know these things and she has to be stupid enough to show up and get on a body cam with Wade who she's not supposed to be with. Now, why do you think Wade shows up? Do you call an ex-boyfriend to do this? Maybe. Oh, where's but the it, daddy? Because I ain't her daddy, the daughter's daddy. Yeah, but how about this one? You got yourself in all this trouble with your big mouth and you took the stand when you didn't have to and you shot it off and now they've discovered all these things. So you want to go put the lie to what you said or chance it so you ask this person to show up with you with the body cams recording you doing what that you could not have done with a phone call. This is and the kid isn't even there. The kid's already locked up. This is another dumb bunny stunt. So did she think if she showed up instead of going straight to the precinct, you think she was trying to say, Well, do you know who I am? type uh, of thing. Yeah. They all shook hands. Well, speaking of Fannie Willis and breaking the law, today it was a hearing. Mm -hmm. Judge allows open records lawsuit to continue against Fulton County District Attorney. Her office said Merchant filed lawsuit on behalf of Michael Roman, a co-defendant in the election interference case involving former President Donald Trump and his allies. So this is a clip here. I want to thank my buddy, Sherrod Brown. Brown. Oh no, I'm not saying this whole thing. And receive public records because in view of the definition of custodian, quote, OCGA 50-18-71B1, is expansive enough to include anyone with the requisite care and control of public records. So why would that not include Madam, or not Madam DA? Why would that not include Ms. Willis in her individual capacity? Well, uh, the distinction lies in that the request was not received by Madam in her individual capacity. Okay. Uh, so without the receipt of a, a request, how can one be held liable for not responding to a request. Enough. He's a custodian of the records. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, in our following motion to dismiss against the DA in her official capacity, as outlined in our brief, we have here the D, uh, uh, Madam DA in her official capacity is a state constitutional officer protected by the state constitutional immunity. And this immunity is an immunity that is not, that this does not disappear because of this Open Records Act. 
Um, secondly, not a VA in her official capacity does not fall under the definition of an agency. Um, and as outlined in my brief, we go on to talk about her role in the judicial branch of government. And because of this immunity and her judicial function, she is not subject to the Open Records Act. So, I, I know I sound like a broken record, Ms. Monroe, but the, what, where I keep, I understand the importance of determining whether or not someone in the capacity um, who heads uh, a prosecutorial agency, as Madam D.A. Willis does, how important it is to make sure um, that she is able to operate independently, which is historically why there were some concerns about um, providing immunity to someone in her position. Um, that part I understand, but when you get to the, the, the statement of she's not subject, the DA is not subject to the Open Records Act, I keep falling back to then why do you have an Open Records Act custodian who is providing open records? Should I play what she what she asked? I'm not well, playing the whole. Here, here's, wow. what, here's the defeat to that uh, point that the prosecutions are raising. You have a right to exercise the subpoena powers of the court to produce witnesses and evidence in your own behalf. So that's a constitutional right that supersedes anything the state of Georgia may have one way or the other. And in order to get this necessary evidence to produce the defense under due process of law as it applies to the U.S. government and the Bill of Rights and under the 14th Amendment to the states, that requires that the custodian of the records, who in fact in this case is Fannie Willis, be subject to subpoenas to produce the record she's custodian of. That defeats the whole argument. It's so simple. This is something that you would test a first year law student on for con law. Mm -hmm. So they don't get it. Now, the judge even mentioning it, but she gets at it another way. But keep going. Let's hear the what happens. You want to hear some more? Okay. Yeah, let's hear some more. Volume of I don't have a direct answer for that. Okay, fair enough. So she didn't have it. So what you just said was right, Josh. And because they replied, we don't have an answer for that. <laughs> I appreciate your candor. Yeah. Well, she um, was coming at it a different way, just under Georgia law, without applying the U.S. law and precedents. You have a right to subpoena witnesses and evidence in your own behalf. You have a right to compel the production of witnesses and evidence in your own behalf. So how are you going to do it if some person who is the custodian of vital records that you require for your proof is immune from compliance with a constitutional issue, not from the Georgia Constitution, but from that of the United States of America. So the judge goes to state law and state principle and she extrapolates which is good here so by I'll the way this is an example of what they said the very first case that the u.s supreme court heard in 1792 it said all law in the united states is judge-made law until it is superseded by legislative uh by, uh, ordinance or legislation. So here we go. This is something where law was unclear. The judge extrapolated on the common law and the case law, and she properly rules. Get up off of it and produce the evidence. And it also makes a suggestion that their refusal to produce the evidence, since it's just simply administrative. It is an act of obfuscation that is presented to present prevent the working of justice. See, it looks very bad, but that office. Should I play some more? While we, you know, yeah, go ahead, play some more. 
also in terms of Madam DA's official capacity, um, if it was the intention of the legislature to exempt in its entirety uh, all district attorneys, um, why would that not be listed as one of the exceptions? Why would it be necessary to have sub three and sub four of 50-18-72 that specifically say, we're not gonna make you produce investigatory records. We're not does it link them together, okay? Uh, the portal is just a mechanism to just make things more convenient for the public to access public records, but does not consolidate the departments or uh, make them one and broadly and in favor of disclosure of records. Um, how in the world would someone figure that out? They wouldn't. And and what would happen, and which is what, what happened to us for a long time, is we were told you have everything. There is nothing else to get. And Ms. Merchant will explain, and probably uh, if you're if allowed, uh, question some witnesses about documents that she has in her possession that we directly requested related to forfeiture that they do they have told us they don't have. So I, I think on a global level, Your Honor, there's a there's a balance that has to be struck in the statute between the public's right to access information they don't have control of and the the person the open records officer's requirement to comply with the statute knowing the records and so i don't think the statute requires the public the citizen to make that distinction i think it's up and i think the law would make that burden placed on the person who's in charge of the records in this case miss willis uh, and her office or to the extent only maintained by IT, Fulton County. And so now, I, I, I. You notice not one of these lawyers has read the, raised the United States Constitution, nor has the judge. They don't teach that anymore. They used to. They pounded into you in first year law school. The first question you ask is, is this statute, is this rule constitutional under the Constitution of the United States of America? then is it so under the state constitution? So before you get into the arguments about its applicability to a given circumstance, you determine whether it's a valid rule. And nobody's talking about that because the you have a right to compel the production of evidence and attendance of witnesses in your own behalf. The list of exemptions that you're talking about are those that have been in law for years, which consist of the investigatory work product of police, investigators, and other folk, or the DA's office itself, not bare bones records, but conclusions based on statements from witnesses, which considering that there may be organized crime considerations, real organized RICO crime considerations, not this nonsense that Fulton County has been going after, let's say, teachers and rap artists and presidential uh, candidate and assistants, but real ones. So you just can't say these are the witnesses, this is what they said until you have some standing to bring that up. But for these general records, uh, yes, uh, those are available, especially in the context of a party defendant to a criminal action requesting them and being told they do not exist, but when in fact they appear to. Now, that's another example of this office not uh, having sufficient candor with the court or the system, and it is piss poor, and somebody ought to pay for that, not just money-wise, but that's criminality. That's uh, abuse of process. That is violating someone's civil rights under federal law, and that's... Well, there's a whole laundry list. Yeah, of well, uh, I want to add in something else with Fannie Willis because um, she was in, the, you know, moving on to something else while she was in the news. Um, I want to share this here. But it says former. By the way, this kind of thing is exactly what Kamala Harris was doing in California, this kind of obfuscation 
where the rules only applied when she decided to apply them, not when justice, equity, and the courts and the law itself applied. Mm -hmm. Looking at Fannie Willis 2.0. Right. So it says former senator launches six-figure ad blitz against Fannie Willis ahead of the Georgia election because Fannie Willis is running for re-election for her DA position. And um, so let me play this clip here. DA Fannie Willis is hitting back at her critics as she fights an appeal that would remove her from former President Donald Trump's election interference case in Georgia. Jonathan Sari is live in Atlanta. He's got more on this for us. So Jonathan, uh, Willis gave a speech today. So how was that received? Yeah, she did indeed. She actually got a standing ovation. This was a very supportive crowd. Uh, speech took place at the Georgia District meeting of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, that meeting taking place here in Atlanta. Funny Willis proclaimed, quote, justice is coming for the unjust and accused her critics of racist and sexist attacks. See, I'm so tired of hearing these idiots call my name as Fanny in a way to attempt to humiliate me. Because like silly schoolboys, the name reminds them of a woman's rear. Fannie Willis is fighting former President Trump's efforts to get the Georgia Court of Appeals to remove her from prosecuting the Georgia election interference case. Back in March, her special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, resigned after the judge ordered that the pair could not prosecute the case together. The defense alleged that their previous romantic involvement created a conflict of interest. Here's what Wade said about that in a CNN interview. What I believe is this whole conversation is a distraction. That's all. It's a it's a tool to to stop the train, to slow down the inevitable, which is um, the trial of the defendants named in the election interference case. Do you believe the trial ultimately happens? Absolutely. And Wade predicted that if convicted, Mr. Trump would face sentencing, as would any other defendant. Sandra. OK, Jonathan Seri, live in Atlanta on that for us. Thank you. Well, let's put it this way. Above and beyond, some people are exempt. And also, oh, dude, you got paid $720,000 for preliminary work. The case hasn't even been set for trial. And I know what I'm looking at when I see it. What you did was not worth what you got paid for it. And in spite of Miss Fannie Willis saying that... Uh, Oh, wow, we whoopee, they're jumping on me because I'm a black woman. No, they're jumping on you for being unethical because the truth of the matter is there's nobody you answer to because you're a constitutional officer. We just heard the judge and your representative talking about that. There's nobody you're answerable to. So anything you approved that Wade claimed that got paid to him, and the two of you were doing all this back and forth cash because you were splitting it. You were a crook and you ought to be in jail.